In this video, we'll be looking at a nice little modular arithmetic trick. If you haven't watched the previous videos in my modular arithmetic series, I recommend you do that first, as we'll be building on some of the things we've talked about there here. Okay, so the trick or tool I want to introduce you to today is Fermat's Little Theorem. This is his Little Theorem, not to be confused with his Last Theorem. You might have heard of Fermat's Last Theorem, which is an entirely different beast, definitely not something we're going to cover today. So this is Fermat's Little Theorem. Fermat's Little Theorem says, if P is a prime and A is co-prime to P, then A to the power of P minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo P. Okay, let's try and understand what is going on here. We have two numbers, P, which is a prime number, and another number, A. We have this word co-prime here, and we want A and P to be co-prime to each other in order to use this theorem. So first off, we need to understand what the word co-prime means. Two numbers are co-prime if the only common factor they have is one. Let's see what I mean by that. So let's say I consider the numbers five and eight. The factors of 5 are 1 and 5. 2 doesn't go into 5, 3 doesn't go into 5, 4 doesn't go into 5, it's just 1 and 5. In fact, 5 is a prime number, so we know it's just 1 and 5. The factors of 8, well, of course we have 1, 2 goes into 8, 3 is not a factor, 4 is a factor, 5 is not a factor, 6 isn't a factor, neither is 7, and 8 is a factor. Every number is a factor of itself. So two numbers are co-prime if the only factor they have in common is one. And if we look here, the factors of five, one and five, eight doesn't have five as any of its factors. The only factor five and eight have in common is one. So these numbers are co-prime. Let's look at two other numbers. Let's say I consider nine and 12. So the factors of nine, we have one, we have three, two doesn't go into nine, neither does four, neither does five, neither does six or seven, eight. So the next factor is nine. So we have one, three and nine are factors of nine. And then 12, 12 is quite a lot of factors. We have a one, a two, three, four, all these numbers go into 12 and six. And then finally 12 itself. Those are the factors of 12, all the numbers that divide into 12. So if we have a look, we always have one as a factor in common. We also have three in common. So these two numbers have a number that isn't one as a common factor. So therefore these numbers are not co-prime. So two numbers are co-prime if their only common factor is one. So let's pick two numbers that meet this requirement. So let's say I pick P as five. Five is a prime number, so that's okay. And let's say I say a is equal to 2. Now, 2 and 5 are co-prime. The only common factor that 2 and 5 have are 1. So that means Fermat's Little Theorem can be used. Now, in this case, Fermat's Little Theorem would say a, which is 2, to the p minus 1, so our p is 5, so p minus 1 is 4, is congruent to 1 mod p, and p is 5. So we've written this statement, 2 to the power of 4 is congruent to 1 mod 5. And actually, we can know quite quickly that that is, in fact, true. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 16 would indeed be congruent to 1 modulo 5, as 5 goes into 15, and 16 is one more than that. You might be wondering why this is useful. We're going to go on to some examples of where we could use this in a moment. But crucially, what I like about this theorem is we've got this fairly big number, and we've said it's congruent to 1, and we like things being congruent to 1. If you've looked at some of the previous modular arithmetic question walkthroughs I've done, you'll remember that if we find something that's congruent to 1, it's really useful because 1 times 1 is just 1. So it makes a lot of multiplications of high powers a lot quicker. We'll go through an example now. So let's have a look at this first question I have here. What is the remainder when 2 to the power of 35 is divided by 17? Now, we've seen sort of questions like this before, which sound initially very intimidating, but with modular arithmetic, we can make them a lot more straightforward. Crucially, this question is exactly the same as saying, what is 2 to the 35 mod 17? When I look at this question, I know I have a little tool in my toolbox, Fermat's Little Theorem. And what's jumping out to me is that we have a number here, a 2, and a modulo, which we're going for 17, 
and 2 and 17 are co-prime. 2 and 17 are both in fact prime, so the only factor they will therefore share is 1. So 2 and 17 are co-prime. So that means I can use Fermat's Little Theorem. Fermat's Little Theorem says that 2 are A, so let me write here, we're using A equals 2 and we're saying P equals 17. So by Fermat's Little Theorem, 2 to the power of 17 minus 1, which is 16, is congruent to 1 mod 17. And that is by Fermat's Little Theorem, or FLT for short. Now, why do I like this? Well, we're trying to find 2 to the 35 mod 17, and we know things about 2 to the 16. So, of course, I could do the sort of strategy we've done in previous videos where I keep multiplying 2s together until we get a 1, and then I go from there. But here we've got a little shortcut. We're told straight away that 2 to the 16 is congruent to 1. So I can say that 2 to the 35 is congruent, well, in fact, 2 to the 35 in general equals 2 to the 16, two lots of those, so 2 to the 16 squared, so if we have 2 times 2 times 2, 16 times, and we times that by 2 times 2 times 2, times two 16 times, that would give us 2 to the 32. So 2 to the 32, it's like 3 away from 2 to the 35, so we'll times it by another set of three twos. So 16 lots of two, twice, plus the three lots of two here, 16 plus 16 plus three equals 35. We know that two to the 16 is congruent to one modulo 17. So this is congruent to one squared times two cubed mod 17. This is 1 times 8, which equals 8. So, modulo 17, 2 to the power of 35, is congruent to 8. So I put the congruent sign here as that's the point where we were reducing modulo 17, where we were doing maths that wouldn't normally be true outside of modulo 17 world. And then I put equal signs here as that this would be true in normal maths world, 1 squared times 2 cubed is the same as 1 times 8 um, in normal maths world, but I could also put congruences there. It sort of doesn't matter too much at this point. So 2 to the power of 35 is congruent to 8 mod 17. So the remainder, when 2 to the 35 is divided by 17, is 8. Notice how this little trick here sped things up hugely. So always when you have a power question and you're trying to reduce that modulo a certain number, we always want to find powers that give us a 1 because that makes this multiplication a lot easier. And Fermat's Little Theorem is just a little shortcut for a power of a number that is 1. So we like Fermat's Little Theorem. Let's look at this other question here. What is the remainder when 4 to the power of 532 is divided by 11? So absolutely huge number. If you saw this question before you'd learned about modular arithmetic, you would be like, this is a ridiculous question to even ask. But we're not going to be afraid because we have some modular arithmetic tricks up our sleeves. So we know that this question is the same as saying, what is 4 to the 532 mod 11? We know we have a modular arithmetic question and we might want to think through the tools we know about modular arithmetic and see what can help us. And straight away I'm thinking, okay, we have a 4, we have an 11. 4 and 11 are definitely co-prime. 11 is a prime number, the only factors are 1 and 11, 4 has 1, 2 and 4 as factors, the only factor they have in common is 1, so 4 and 11 are indeed co-prime. Really important to do this check before you apply Fermat's Little Theorem. If you had a different set of numbers here, if it was like 3 to the power of something mod 9, you couldn't use it, 3 and 9 are not co-prime, so you do have to check. But we're all good, we can use Fermat's Little Theorem. So we're going to use A is 4 and P is 11. So Fermat's Little Theorem tells us that 4, our a, to the p minus 1, so to the power of 10, is congruent to 1 mod 11. And that is by Fermat's Little Theorem. 
Okay, so this is great news. We have a power of four that is congruent to one, and we always like that because that makes multiplying much easier. So four to the 532. So let me write that as four to the 532. That is equal in our normal math world to four. I'll write it out a little bit longer this time. So this is four to the 530 times by four squared, which is the same as four to the 10 to the power of 53. If you do four times itself 10 times, and then that times itself 53 times, you'll get four to the power of 530 times by four squared. So that is just always true in every normal mass world. But now let's go into our clock 11 world. That is congruent by Fermat's Russell theorem to one to the power of 53 times four squared. And that is now we're in mod 11 world. One to the 53, well, one to the power of anything is always one, times by four squared. One times 16, which is equal to 16. And we can reduce this further. So we're working in modulo 11 world. 16 is bigger than 11. So we wouldn't normally say something is congruent to 16 mod 11. If I think about our 11 sided clock, where would 16 land? It would land on the five. So that is congruent to five mod 11. So four to the power of 532 is congruent to five modulo 11. So that means the remainder when four to the 532 is divided by 11 is five. So a couple of nice little ways to use Fermat's Little Theorem. If you found this a useful tool, watch the next video and I'll provide you with an even bigger tool that can be used in more scenarios. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this new little modulo arithmetic trick that you can have up your sleeves. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more aesthetic mathy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe.